sometimes when this state of seeing happens and many people have come to that state of the absence of ego, no mind, it is not difficult to bring uh, maybe most of you here easily into that state of no mind, into your Buddha nature. It's not difficult, but something doesn't stay because it has uh, got so much uh, commitments to the mind that it go out, something is pulled out, you see. But for some beings, mm, it's, it is so clear. Once this state arises of pure clarity, and in some beings it has taken place, in a number of them, then the mind has a certain time frame to finish you off. In that time, like uh, the self is incubating in itself, the mind will come like a wolf to finish you off, then if it, doesn't, if it doesn't succeed in that time frame, you are free. All the beings are caught in this vast net, like a school of fishes, one big net over of maya, and some are wriggling, and now and again one is gone, get away. And as I said before, a, a moment of awakening is not necessarily total liberation. It happens and one comes to see, you know, none of these things that appear, even my identity now does not have that magnetism anymore. I can see clearly. Hmm. Buddha himself said also, in that moment, he said, yes, that which has been causing me me rebirth now this has been caught and snapped he can cannot send me again he cannot conquer my mind anymore that seeing took place so profoundly beyond an emotional seeing hmm? beyond the special effects that we expect in the mind a rooted grounded sober seeing a clarity that is profound you see, in the same way also it says that uh, Jesus, after his baptism, something took place, a shift internally. Uh, and then what happened? He went alone, you know, with no disciples, into the wilderness. What did it mean? You can have many different ways of seeing this. And when he, his wisdom was tested, you have to be tested. It cannot just be something you feel nice about. You cannot just have a cappuccino awakening. Uh, yeah, yeah. You can talk so eloquently about it. It has to be swallowed and digested and assimilated. Then what you know becomes what you are. No different. So usually when this happens, Tremendous forces seem to come to try and divert your attention. Also, there are some forces, we call them the energies, we call vasana or samskaras, meaning some uh, latent tendencies, some root tendencies, which are really been uh, moving alongside you in our human expression. A deep fear of rejection, fear of annihilation, fear of... Uh, of uh, losing identity, all of these, fear of just being alone, even. They begin to come, the mind will use this force, it comes up. And when these forces come, they are very powerful, and, but they are only powerful because of identity. They are full of identity. They are full of the pus of identity. And I say that these forces, when they arrive, when they arise, it is as though they hold the beingness hostage to the extent that sometimes uh, you, you feel like you're in a state of division and there's a gap you cannot close. But this is just in the mind, it's the taste of delusion inside. And you have the power to transcend it.
but not by panic, not by fear, not by identity. You have to be able to see that identity also, you go beyond this hold of identity, hmm? you stand your ground and then this fever will pass. <clears throat> the fever of the mind will pass. Sometimes it, when you are being under attack like this, you say, but my God, you know, I cannot defeat this. This is like some forever power, but it passes. Sometimes it comes again. They say, uh, after the temptation of uh, Christ, when he defeated this power, then it says the devil left him to come back at a more opportune moment. Again, when you are low, he will come again, and like this it comes. If I don't speak to you like this, I am not telling you the full truth, because a lot of people have had the experience of awakening, and then somehow, uh, the, in a short time, they start to tell you the reports. Oh, this thing happened. It was like I'm walking through the Red Sea. Everything in life is happening spontaneously. Listen, 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 for a certain thing, and, and then, it was going so great, and then, I said also. We could make a book called And Then, because many people have had this taste, this sense of freedom. And then, and I say, okay, bring me to your and then moment, and let's slow down the frame one by one and have a look at what is and then. I want to see your and then. If you don't touch identity, see if you can find and then what it means, and then, and then the mind came back as though that is sufficient to eclipse your intuitive knowing. So you are asking this question, just to go over it. Did anyone attain enlightenment, your devotees, from all these people, that follow your pointing. I don't know if they follow. Sometimes you half follow. Huh? You half follow and then when it gets hot, then we you you try another practice. Some people they give up, they say, No, no, I'm gonna go back to Vipassana or I'm gonna go and sit in a cave because they have not completed the looking. I want someone who's completed the looking. If it was not possible I don't come sit in front of you. Waste of time. Some people report tremendous change has happened in my life. Tremendous change has happened. Uh, so much healing has taken place. So much of this is good. It has to happen. That has to happen. But what I'm pointing to yet, are you clear on this yet? Of course, beautiful things happen, miracles happen. People speak, miracles happen. They want to write me miracles, I read me miracles. Okay, okay, okay. But have you seen what I'm speaking? Not miracles. Miracles happen. But it's the greatest miracle. It's for you to realize I am not what I have been thinking I have been for so long. We have an idea that there is a transcending the mind and then waking up. But sometimes there is waking up and then transcending the mind. I think today, if there is something significant also to add to your contemplation, it's this thing that upon seeing, when seeing really reveals, is revealing that unicity is being seen, then it is like there is a time frame a season where the mind must try. All our conditioned identity, projections, dreams, imagination, attachments, desires, fears, all of that will come and you must transcend it there. You cannot, you cannot win a fight when it's finished. In the middle of that seeing, you must hold your ground. It will soon be over. And when that season passes, uh, a great space opens up. 
in that space innumerable pictures can appear but none of them can stick anymore because you have transcended that. It was what like Jesus say, he say this thing, uh, he was talking to some of his friends, his disciples, he says, trust in God, trust also in me, he says, because I have overcome the world, not overpowered it, I have overcome. And this man, I don't think that he travelled to Mexico, I don't think he went to the Caribbean or to the United States, I don't think he was in China. Uh, still he could say, I overcome the world. What world is he talking about? Probably never left Palestine, I don't know. Who could say this thing, I overcome the world? Maharaj, Nisargadatta Maharaj, also he says, I am the principle that witnessed the, the dissolution of the entire universe, yet I remain untouched by that. He hardly left Bombay. What are they speaking about? Hmm? From what source are they speaking to say such such universal things? So the world can only be in this way, transcending here, transcending this bubble of conceptual thought, of identity, of programming and conditioning, habit, all of that, overcome the, the pull, the magnetism of that energy to transcend that. What a great game! Or to be a servant of those energies. Thank you. Shri